Good afternoon. I now call, I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety. Without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Mr. McMillian? Ms. Hen? Yes. Yes. Miss, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kuhn. Yes. And Mr. Offerman. Yes. Ms. Slate, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Williams. Dr. Boswell McComas. Present. Ms. Lagerman. Present. Mr. Dickerson. Ms. Howie. Here. Ms. Rung Farasangaroon. Ms. Lowry. Present. Dr. Scriven. Present. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Zarchin. Ms. Byers. Dr. Jones. Sorry, this is Ms. Byers. I'm present. Thank you. Dr. Jones. Dr. Roberts. Present. Ms. Burnock. Present. Mr. Dixit. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Ms. Jay. Present. Mr. Plate. I'm right here. Ms. Levenstein. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Good afternoon, Carla Simons. Thank you. And good afternoon, this is Debbie Piper. Okay, I have everyone. Anyone else? I believe that concludes attendance. Thank you, Ms. Slade. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Saris, please state your name for the record and proceed uh, with presenting K1 JME 90421 cohort general secondary content area certification cohort for uh, CCBC. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services. Our first item, as you mentioned, is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a cohort that will provide highly qualified teachers in the critical shortage areas of general secondary uh, content area certification grades 7 through 12. Approval is requested for a one year five month contract and contract spending authority of $175,518.
You are mute. Is, sorry, is there any discussion? I'll call each board member's name for that purpose. Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. Ms. Hen? No questions. Mr. Kuhn? Yeah, just a quick question. How many slots does this pay for? How many teachers? Uh, typically it's about 20, but I'll ask Ms. Lagerman to uh, step in with that. I can pull up. on the line too. Yeah, so I was just pulling up that cohort. Um, we've got uh, several ones. So I was just pulling up that list. I'm happy to answer that question sure. if it would be helpful. Sure. So that particular cohort with CCBC, uh, we are asking to contract with them to offer 14 seats in each of five courses that will be offered each semester uh, so that we can seat teachers uh, who are conditionally certified in the courses that they need in order to become professionally certified. So not every so, participant would take every course. OK, so it's it's for 14 seats for five courses. And the idea is it'll just be mixed across people that need it. It's yes. not a single cohort that people are going to just go through. Yes, correct. All right, thank you. Mr. Alfinan. Mr. Kuhn asked my question. Thank you. Uh, and we have other additional board members. Ms. Bastor, did you have a question? I think she's gone. No, I'm here. I, I, if you don't mind, I'll wait until you've gotten through all of the ones with the colleges because it's a general question and you might say it's not appropriate for today. So I'll wait if you don't mind. Thanks. There being okay, there being no further questions, we'll move to proceed to contract number two, Mr. Saris. Yes, ASI 905-21, Master of Arts in Teaching English for Speakers of Other Languages. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a cohort in teaching ESOL. Approval is requested for a three-year, nine-month contract and spending authority of two hundred sixteen thousand dollars. Is there any discussion? I'll call each board members' names. Um, Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. Ms. Hen? Mr. Q? Oh, thank you. I, I basically have the same question. Perhaps, Mr. Saris, as you walk through this, you can tell us how many people we're paying for or how many slots per contract. Thank you. Okay, I'll defer to Ms. Piper again. Sorry, took me a second to unmute. Uh, this particular contract is for a Master of Arts in Teaching program for a maximum of 20 participants. So this group of participants would go through all the courses together and complete with a Master of Arts in Teaching and professional certification. Our target audience for this particular cohort is our paraeducators as part of our Grow Our Own initiative and any conditionally certified teachers who need an MAT in order to become professionally certified ESOL teachers. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Offerman? I, I, None. Sorry, Mr. Q, go ahead. Were there additional questions? Uh, yes, Ms. Jones, I, I, I had one other question. So we're providing 20 slots. Does that meet the need? Or is this just kind of a step? Well, I'll answer first to indicate that we have had an ongoing uh, recruitment effort for ESOL teachers, and I expect that it 
uh, remains difficult as our ESOL population uh, grows, but either Ms. Piper or Ms. Simons may want to add to that response. This is Debbie Piper. I'll jump in and say that uh, certainly we um, hope that this cohort will help us to meet the need of recruiting additional ESOL teachers and growing our own paraeducators and conditionally certified teachers into the role. Uh, we do have a budget uh, for cohort programs and we are trying to make best use of that budget. Uh, by contracting for a variety of opportunities that meet needs across the entire school district. So this one program will not meet all the needs, but it will help us across the district. Great, and one last question. Um, when we have someone that has one of these programs that we're funding, do we require, um, is there a work commitment? So for instance, we pay for their masters, do we then turn around and expect three years or five years, uh, basically a payback time frame? Mr. Saris, would you like me to respond to that question? Sure, it's currently not part of the TAPCO agreement and would have to be negotiated as such, but if Ms. Piper has any additional information, I welcome that. That is that is what I was going to say. We're when we design the cohort programs, we ensure that the program is aligned to the master agreement. So the number of credits and courses included is the same as what the master agreement would entitle any employee to. So there is no uh, repayment or work commitment associated uh, with receiving the benefits that are part of the master agreement. All right, thank you. Mr. Offerman, any questions? No, no. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question, Mr. Saris or Ms. Piper, if you could clarify. How many local colleges and universities do we have cohort agreements with, and how do we decide these schools? Uh, Ms. Piper, go ahead. We, we negotiate with each uh, higher ed institution based on the availability of courses that meet our needs and the schedules uh, that they can make available. Um, and I believe we use almost every uh, local institution. Thank you, Mr. Saris. That is, um, that is absolutely correct. Each fall, um, I receive a list of our school system needs and priorities uh, from the Chiefs of Human Resources, um, Organizational Effectiveness and Curriculum and Instruction, and then I convene a meeting and I invite all the local colleges and universities, uh, deans and directors to attend the meeting and provide them with an overview of our needs as well as uh, the format that we ask them to uh, propose programs. And so they are given a period of time to propose cohort programs to us that they believe will meet our needs. And those proposals are reviewed uh, by the directors and office heads of the programs with knowledge of what that college or university brings to the table in terms of faculty strength and resources. Uh, the programs are reviewed and they're reviewed uh, in alignment to the compass and to our equity policy um, and the responsiveness of the proposal to the needs that we said that we have. So in the case of this particular proposal from Notre Dame of Maryland University, it is understood that they have particular strength in the area of ESOL education, which is why this proposal was recommended uh, to the board for consideration for approval. Thank you. Um, Board members, any other questions? I do. May I ask a question? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Hester. Okay. Thank you. Uh, since um, you sort of went into this avenue, I'll just go ahead and ask this question now. And thank you for the answer that was just given about how you um, develop these cohorts with these uh, schools. So I'm wondering, uh, 
what happens then with our historically black colleges and universities in the area? Do they not participate? Um, I do know that they do offer some of the programs that these contracts um, are, are considering. So what happens? What, what's the short fall here? What happens as to why we don't have any of them in our list for years? Thank you. Other than Bowie, and I do know that, and that is for um, teachers who are working on fulfilling that conditional need. But I would like to hear based on the last answer. Certainly, thank you for that question, Ms. Pasteur. Uh, for this particular group of cohorts that we're bringing before you today, these programs are all generally organized around our workforce shortage areas. So all of the proposals coming before you today are helping us to grow our own paraeducators into teacher roles and helping uh, to ensure that our conditionally certified teachers become professionally certified. Um, at our next contracts meeting in April, we'll be bringing some additional cohort proposals that are organized for our professionally certified teachers. So you will see more proposals next month uh, and from some different institutions than the ones you're seeing today. Uh, so the ones today represent what we considered uh, the strongest proposals in their, in their areas. Um, and not all of the colleges and universities propose cohorts in all areas. I think they, when they hear what our needs are, they go back to campus and have conversations around their resources and uh, what they can commit to each of the various school districts that they partner with. So today we have the proposal from Bowie State University for our conditionally licensed teachers, and that is the only proposal that came forward for this particular need from any of our HBCUs. So uh, Morgan State University did not propose a program to meet this need, but Bowie State University did. But they were given that opportunity to do that because I do know these programs exist because I had been a, a teacher in a cohort between Morgan and Baltimore County and Baltimore City for years. Um, and then it, it stopped, but I just wanna make sure that they are included and they know what it is we're doing because we do look in our equity committee at the um, racial uh, racial makeup um, of our teachers as well as gender. And in this case, uh, the gender goes away from our male teachers versus our females. So they just did not come back. Is that what you're saying that they did not come back with a proposal for a cohort for any of these, the MAT or this? I just that is to correct. Yes, Morgan State University did not propose any cohorts for our paraeducators or our conditionally certified teachers. Uh, Bowie State University was the only HBCU that put in a proposal for this particular need. Thank you. Um, there being no further questions, we will proceed to contract number three. Mr. Saris, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, ASI 906-21, Master of Arts in Teaching, Math and Science. This is a new Cooperative Administration of Programs contract for a cohort of Master of Arts in Teaching, Math and Science. Approval is requested for a three-year, nine-month contract and contract spending authority of $198,000. Committee members, do you have any questions? Board members, any um, questions? Ms. Joes, I'll, I'll ask the same question. How many, how many slots are we paying for for this? Ms. Piper, please go ahead. Sorry, opening that one up. And I will confess to having been distracted for a moment. We're on Stevenson now, am I right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. The math and science. 
Sorry, I opened the wrong one. This is an MAT program in mathematics and science. Uh, we would love to have some paraeducators um, come forward through our Grow Our Own program for this particular cohort, but it will also be attractive to our conditionally certified teachers in secondary math and science. 20 seats uh, being funded uh, through this proposal. Thank you, Ms. Piper. Um, any other questions, board members? If not, Mr. Saris, please proceed to the next contract. Thank you, JBO 900-21, Master of Arts in Teaching Program for Paraeducators leading to elementary certification. Again, a new cooperative administration of programs contract for cohort in elementary education. Approval is requested for a three or four month contract and contract spending authority of $240,000. Thank you, Mr. Sarah's committee members. Any questions, discussion? Um, hearing none. Hi, Ms. Go sorry. ahead. <laughs> Same question. Um, I, I have a different question on this one since we're talking about elementary school teaching. Do we know? Um, and, I, and I would hope that this is the case, but are we focused on the science of teaching as part of the curriculum that's being um, shared uh, with, with this cohort? So this is Debbie Piper. I'll jump in on this one. The um, elementary Master of Arts in Teaching program at Goucher College uh, would be a program that would focus on both the content and the pedagogy needed to be a certified teacher in grades one to six. So there would be a focus on the core content areas of English language arts, mathematics, social studies, and science, along with the pedagogy or what we might call the science of teaching those particular disciplines. So disciplinary literacy as well as strategies for engaging and assessing student learning. OK, I guess I. The reason I bring it up is we, we have a challenge, in, in, especially in kindergarten to third grade. We have to make sure that our kids <laughs> Mr. Kuhn, you are breaking up. I'm so sorry, Mr. Kuhn. I was unable to, to hear your question. Could you repeat your question, please? OK, so um, I'm sorry, I'll try again. I'm outside, so the wind is the wind's a little strong here. Um, the, the question I'm trying to get to is how are we focusing on on reading because it's it's key and vital um, and not just doing the same things we have been doing and watching the scores go down and down and down. Thank you for clarifying that question. Um, it is a, a, an important question and one of the reasons why this cohort is a little bit longer and has more courses than the others that we've looked at so far is that this cohort does include uh, the four courses that the Maryland State Department of Education requires for all elementary certified teachers and the courses will be taken in conjunction with work in the school system because the participants will be working paraeducators or conditionally certified teachers so they will be able to put immediately into practice uh, the learning from those reading courses. Um, Goucher is notable in their strength in preparing elementary teachers and in particularly in preparing reading teachers. So thank you for that question. OK, great. Um, where do I find the listing of the courses that are offered and required for these cohorts? Mr. Saris, does the cohort planning document that that comes with the exhibit, does that go as part of what the board members receive in their packet? That's the document that I'm looking at on my screen. No, it it has not been provided um, and I do not have it myself. So if you would like to share this, uh, I don't know if I can. 
How about if I if I put it in the chat as an attachment, would that be appropriate? Sure. Could you just okay. could you just email it? I'm sorry, I'm not online, so I can't access the chat. I would just like to have it as a reference to fully understand what we're paying for. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you, Ms. Piper. Um, there being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mrs. Saris, please proceed. Yes, GDA 903-21 Summer Institute for Conditionally Licensed Teachers. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract to provide for a cohort for conditionally licensed teachers. Approval is requested for a five month contract and contract spending authority of $225,000. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, any discussion, questions? Board members, any questions? Hearing none, uh, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Sarris, please proceed. Yes, ASI 806-21 Ice Cream and Ice Cream Freezers. This is a new cooperative contract to provide for ice cream and ice cream freezers for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with three one-year options with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,323,000. Thank you, Mr. Jarrett. I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Mr. George, I've been on this committee for 26 months and and honestly I'm embarrassed that I don't thoroughly understand this type of contract. Now obviously we're not buying ice cream for 175 schools and giving it away. Correct. So we'll sell that ice cream. So where is it reflected in the revenues coming back from the sale of the ice cream? Right, so um, just since I happen to have a budget document handy, uh, it's it's sold uh, as part of our food and nutrition services uh, program. And let's see, uh, they generate about $12 billion in revenue uh, for the fund, uh, which has about a 42 million operating budget and uh, so I'm going to see if I can pull up the page here where we have uh, the revenues for the uh, enterprise fund and that would be on page 93 uh, of our current budget document and um, there are lunch sales, breakfast sales, and other sales and my guess is uh, that this falls into that other or a la carte category of sales which uh, kids really like and they <laughs> pay for it. So that's where I'm not following it. That's not going to be reflected in this contract. It's going to be reflected in the operating budget. Right, so this is this is the expense to acquire the ice cream and the revenues uh, are on the other side of the ledger in the food services operation. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Committee members, any other questions? I'm Mr. Saris, this is Mr. Kuhn. Just following up with Mr. McMillian's questions. Um, and unfortunately I don't have it in front of me, but in the write-up, don't you usually have the funding, like where the funding comes? Is funding coming out of our operating budget or is this like a some other kind of revolving fund where the money comes in and goes back out? No, this is a uh, purchase of um, uh, materials or uh, and which are, you know, cost of goods sold in a typical uh, income statement. So these are the materials we purchase and we sell these at a uh, at a markup 
and those revenues go to support all of the operations in the food services program. All right, is there a way uh, just to, to understand the budget item? Um, I mean, this more than covers for itself, right? Because it sounds like from what you're saying, it generates, you know, income. Yes. Uh, is it beyond, it's beyond the cost, right? Because of the markup. Right. And what have you. Right. Okay. This is one of, of these a la carte menu options uh, are where a lot of the uh, so-called profit uh, is generated for food and nutrition services. All right, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Board members, any other questions? Yes, Ms. Joes, this is Ms. Hen. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Saris. Hello. Hi, I just had one question, and sure. that has to do with the structuring of this contract. I know it's a cooperative under the Anne Arundel contract. I'm curious as to, you may or may not be able to answer this, but as to why it's um, limited to one year with the three one-year options. And I imagine being a cooperative, those were the terms that Anne Arundel negotiated. But I'm I'm curious as to whether or not we um, did a cost analysis as to whether we could um, do better on pricing, um, offering a longer term on this versus using the cooperative. Well, the the Anne Arundel County acted as the lead agency for the uh, what the Baltimore Regional Cooperative Purchasing Committee, which is also known by the acronym BRICPAC. So in this case, all of our Baltimore uh, Central Maryland LEAs use this contract. Um, and uh, dairy pricing is somewhat volatile and often uh, is uh, affected by government subsidies. And so the pricing uh, does shift from year to year. And uh, so the contract, it, it's, it's essentially from our perspective, um, a four year contract and that pricing uh, is built in, uh, the, the multi-year discount is built in, but I believe there's an allowance or an adjustment for for dairy price, uh, uh, spot prices and the dairy markets. Okay, so those, um, if we were to exercise those options, then we're, we're not locking in the pricing is what no. you're saying because of the fluctuation in the market. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Mr. Offerman, any questions? None at this time. All right, hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed to the next contract. Yes, uh, the next, whoops, I just, let me uh, grab my paper here, because, oh, there we go. Um, Next item, JBO 701-18, equipment contract for electronic parts, supplies, and installation thereof. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of parts, supplies, maintenance, repairs, and upgrades of various electronic systems for schools and offices. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $850,000 bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2,988,880 with five uh, awarded vendors approved by the board in October 2017. Thank you, Mr. Sarah's committee members. Any questions, discussion? Um, hearing none, Mr. Sarah's, please proceed to the yeah. next contract. Uh, the next item, uh, JBO 704-21, plumbing supplies and equipment. This is a new competitively bid contract for plumbing supplies and equipment for the Department of Facilities Management and Strategic Planning and the Office of Career and Technology and Technical Education and Fine Arts. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with five recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1.6 million. 
The board members, any questions? Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. DeSeris, please proceed to the next contract. Okay, I believe this I'm is sorry, for- I'm sorry, Mr. Sarris. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is Mr. Kuhn. Uh, I just have one question. Do, are these plumbing supplies, do they include the water fountains that we have to upgrade due to um, lead in the water and things like that? Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking through the uh, the price list, um, and I do believe it would include fixtures. Um, and perhaps Mr. Dixit could verify that, but based on the vendors, I, I would say yes. Yes, the answer is yes to that question. Yeah, we have vendors such as Kohler, Delta, um, and uh, Halsey Taylor, who are three of the big national uh, manufacturers of plumbing fixtures. Okay, great. I was wondering if we, you know, track the program from purchase to cradle to grade, basically. So, for instance, if we're buying from contractor A and we start getting tests of lead, um, and they're from the fixture, if we're tr if we're tracing it back to the supplier. Um, and if we're looking at that at all. So let me try to answer that question, George. Uh, that information is housed in our work order. So while we do not maintain it separately, uh, we have access to that information in case you want to pull it out. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, board members, if there are no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. So Sarris. good afternoon. Oh, go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management. I would like to give you a little bit of background for the next contract, MWE 826-21. Uh, as you will recall, some of you will recall, board had approved a software package some time ago in the meeting of January the 9th, 2020 uh, for trying on a pilot basis software package to upgrade our quality of work order system, our ability to compile energy data, and a couple of other uh, uh, other items that the software has the capability of doing. Uh, the name of the software is School Dude. It's a commonly used software for K-12 systems, K-12 schools. We have been trying that. It has been successful. It's a cloud-based system. And this contract is requesting to continue that for next period of three years, seven months. The annual cost for this uh, software for all of these features is $260,000 to $270,000, and this contract is for three years and seven months. And your approval is requested. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, board members, any questions? Discussion? Mr. Dixit. Ms. Hen. Go ahead, it's Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Dixit. Good afternoon. Um, can you tell me, will this um, system be used at, by our schools as well to enter work orders? That's correct. The intent, great. Yeah. And is the variable um, cost per year based on the number of user licenses, or is there another reason why the cost is expected to fluctuate? Do you know? Uh, it's it's both its number of user license and just the increase in cost, the uh, uh, escalation in prices. Sure. And is there um, regarding the data that's captured in this? Are any of those data planned to be shared publicly in terms of um, I know some LEA share um, facilities data with their um, with the public 
through their website. Does this um, software have that ability and are we planning to take advantage of that if it does? At this time, the focus is to make this program uh, working properly. Once it is done, then we will be able to pull information out of it. And uh, we have plans to see if we can prepare dashboards and put it on more easily understandable format on our websites. So the answer is the data will be available once the implementation is complete. Thank you. And my final question is, will stakeholders have the ability or could they if we enable it to enter um, not necessarily work orders, but to report facilities issues either to schools or to your office directly? All of the schools have the ability to submit the work orders at this time. Uh, other stakeholders outside the school system do not. Does this but, software have the ability to provide stakeholders with that? Uh, we have not inquired about it, but we can uh, we can find that out. At this at this time, I do not have that information. Thank you, and I'm inquiring because um, some of our legislators have asked about air quality testing data, water quality testing data, and I was curious to see if this software would facilitate the tracking of um, stakeholder inquiries or reports of any of those types of issues, or if this would be even a suitable um, application for this type of tool. Uh, as you know, the water quality data for the lead and water testing is posted on the website. Uh, the particular application that are included in this, they do not have the water quality and air quality module at this time, uh, but we can look into it. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Thank you, Ms. Han. Uh, Mr. Kuhn? Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Dixit, what um, energy usage does it track or how, how does it manage or is, is it involved in, in the energy usage of, of the system? Uh, thank you for that question. It's a very good question. So one of the uh, uh, set of data that we keep is energy usage by buildings. So we have a program already and this is uh, going to improve our capability of tracking that. So the energy data is managed by compiling data for each commodity and by that I mean electricity, gas, natural gas and heating oil, whatever the schools uses. It also converts that data into total BTUs per school and has the capability of providing uh, the per square for data for the energy efficiency of a school. Uh, obviously more work is needed to fine tune and refine the quality of that data because it comes in very difficult to enter forms. So there are three commodities. They are built differently and within each commodity sometimes there are several different kind of charges. So it gets to be quite complex in maintaining that data and try to maintain the accuracy of that data. Uh, we hope that this program will uh, help us uh, achieve that goal. Thank you, Thank Mr. Dixit. Um, I have a quick question. Is is there a reason why this was sole sourced? I see it's a cooperative contract. Uh, it's a very good question. We yeah. have, like I indicated, we have other forms of data collection. This is one of the best uh, software package that's available and a lot of school system in the state of Maryland use that. Some of the reports that state requires can only come. Uh, they specify maintenance report from school due. So for a lot of those reasons, for the quality of that data that we get, uh, this is one of the best software available for K-12 application. So that is after you guys evaluated it. So who would be the system um, administrator, for the facilities or IT? Um? We always have the guidance from uh, IT. They reviewed this software 
package, uh, but we manage it ourselves because it is used by. So we have a little group of people who are IT types as related to facilities. So facilities information system consists of a couple of folks that are actively involved in it. OK, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Board members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. The next contract, JME 513-21, is for a concession stand uh, and emergency access to fields in Franklin High School. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the help from Speaker Jones in getting us a grant for getting this project funded. Uh, the scope of work includes creating, uh, um, building a concession stand and access road to the stadium in case of an emergency and related to stormwater management and site work, design work. So, uh, I'm trying to, there were four or five bids for this project and the fluctuation was quite a bit from 968,000 to 1.4 million. Uh, we believe we have received very good price for this and we ask for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Board members, any questions? Uh, hearing none. Ms. Garris, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Pete, any yes. idea how much money uh, Councilman Jones helped out with this. So the grant is in the amount of about eight hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars. And um, if you add contingency to it, which we hope will minimize the use of that, it's right up there. We might need hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in addition to the grant that is approved, which okay. is what we normally do when we get grants. Uh, we try to build a design project as close to it as possible, but if additional funds are needed to do it right, to meet codes and engineering requirements, we do incorporate that. And the money comes out of the local part of the capital fund that board has approved. Yeah, and, and as you are aware, I was a Baltimore County uh, employee for over 35 years. It, I've thought that for years it's up to the respective school communities to develop the outdoor facilities. Is that accurate statement? Well, yes and no. Uh, yes being because there are not funds generally available for outdoor uh, outdoor facilities. Uh, within the limitation of the funds, a lot of times site work is the funding is just not available. Whenever we have funds, we use that. But a lot of schools have raised funds through boosters and other fundraisers. And if if we could supplement those funds, we have done that too at times. Because as you're aware of, and, and uh, me too, there's a number of schools that don't have concession stands. And I'm going to use Chesapeake High School as one example. For years, they sold concessions out of an old school bus underneath a couple canopies. So if there's any, you know, any way that we can help some of these schools. Um, I just think that we need to start planning ahead and looking at that. Thank you very much for your answers. OK, this is this is a very good example of a local elected official was able to help the school. There are several examples of booster uh, raising funds or getting grants, so we continue to encourage that uh, when it's possible. It helps us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, hearing no more discussion, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to contract 11. Uh, the next contract is JBO 70621. That's for the school roof replacement at Millbrook Elementary School. This is one of the systemic projects that board has approved as part of our capital program. And we have received seven bids, active participation, and the lowest bid is within the budget and we request your approval. Thank you. Board members, any discussion, questions? Mm -hmm. 
Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. The next contract is JME 514-21, and that's for the serving line and kitchen renovation at Northwest Academy. It is another project that is part of the capital program, and the project was uh, requested by our food and nutrition folks. We uh, communicate with them on a regular basis, and this was one of the identified priority. We have received several bids, seven bids, and prices are within the budget. We request your approval. Board members, any discussions, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. The next contract is GDA 30921, and that's for the school parking lot improvements at Orem's Elementary School. Uh, the project is part of the capital improvement program that board has approved and there is active participation of bidders. We have seven bids that we received. Um, the prices are within the budget and there were two ad alternates. Both of them will be able to incorporate as part of the project. So we request your approval. Ms. Jones, I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. McMahon. Mr. Pete, has that project already started or are they waiting for us to for the, our approval? We always start project after you approve it. So once you approve it, then our law office gets involved in getting a contract signed. And then after that, we issue what we call notice to proceed. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Ms. Joes, this is Ms. Yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Um, just a comment for Mr. Dixit while we're talking about um, parking lot projects. I wanted to compliment um, you and your team on the parking lot that was completed at Gunpowder Elementary. I had the opportunity to tour it recently and Principal Cunningham could not have been more complimentary um, praising the work that was done, um, just working with the contractors on, on that project. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you and let you know it was, it was a beautiful project and very well done. Made all the difference too with COVID protocols for the return to school, so. Thank you very much. And I would like to share with you that Mr. Plate, who's part of this group here, he heads our construction and improvement office. He himself is a site engineer by training and his team and him have done tremendous things to improve sites throughout the, throughout the system. Well, thank you. Please pass along my appreciation and compliments. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Um, hearing no more questions, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. Ms. Jones, I'm sorry. I yes, Ms. Best, sure, sure. go ahead. But I, I want to just follow uh, Ms. Hen's comments and just say thank you so much for the work that's up and coming for in the Northwest, particularly my beloved Millbrook and that roof. That school has sorely needed that for such a long time. So thank you so much. Thank you. Hearing no more discussion, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. The next contract is ASI 80921. Uh, another serving uh, serving line and kitchen renovation at Pikesville Middle School. It's one of the projects under the capital improvement program and the prices are within the budget. We have two bids in this case, but still the prices are really good. So we request your approval. Board members, any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to the next contract. So there are a there is a series of 15 contracts. So in the interest of time, if I have your approval, I'll summarize that. This is the project of new Northeast Elementary School at Ridge Road. It's a capital project that was approved by the board as part of the capital plan and we have received funds from state and from county so we'll be proceeding with that contract the design is complete all the design reviews are complete 
So these are 15 packages. And like I said, in the interest of time, I'm not going to read each and every contract. If I have your approval, the packages include for testing and inspection, for waste management, site work, concrete, masonry, steel, general trade, roofing, glazing, drywall, flooring, painting, kitchen equipment, mechanical, and electrical. All of these packages, uh, with the exception of two that had only one bid, they have anywhere from two to five bids. The prices are very competitive. The bids are very competitive. And the sum of all of these bids uh, is within the budget that has been approved by the board and you'd like to get your approval on, on, for this contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, just real quick, all of these were competitively bid out and you have bid tabulations done for all of them. That's correct. Okay. And when does construction on this start? Uh, after board approves it, uh, we'll have a contract signed by each of these vendors and we hope to start construction before uh, summer time. Okay. Uh, sorry, board members, any questions? Discussion? Yes, Ms. Joes. This is Ms. Yes, Ms. Thank you. You asked my, my first question, which was around the start of construction. Mr. Dixit, when do we anticipate opening this school? I used to be very comfortable about giving the date, um, but right now with COVID going on, if everything goes as planned, we our target date for completion is August 22. Great. Right. And, and we have state that, funds available now, so we can start, or is it July 1 when you said that construction will start in the summer? Is that after July 1 for the new fiscal year? We can, st we can award the job and we can start construction. Great, thank you. That's all I had. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Board members, any more questions? Hearing none, um, thank you, Mr. Dixit. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 29 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Hen. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Do I have a second? Second, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Um, those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Slate, please take the roll. Ms. Hen? Aye. Mr. Kuhn? Aye. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Aye. Ms. Jones? Aye. There being five in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts 1 through 29 will be moved forward to the board. Is there any further business? Because there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Stay